Oh 
And where's Mary and Joseph? Jesus loves you when you're messy. You can touch him when you're messy. Amen? And he loves you and reaches out to us when we're messy. He does not hold us back. I'm so thankful for that. We could preach on that a while. That's not our sermon, though. <laughs> you know, you're not on. Yellow mic, Kevin. Whichever one that is, I'm not sure. It was, it should say Daniel's. Okay. <laughs> ah, there we go. <laughs> Pastor Nancy, yeah. yes. would you like to lead us in an opening prayer? Sure. Okay, let's Thank get it started. You. Y'all ready to get into the Word here a little bit? Yes. Praise God. Thank you, Heavenly Father, <clears throat> precious Lord Jesus, and wonderful Holy Spirit. Oh. We come into your presence, Lord. We thank you for your wonderful coming to earth to dwell among us, Lord. You said the word became flesh. <coughs> you turned into a, a, a baby. Lord. You made yourself come down, even with diapers and all, as they said on the skit, the messes of being here on the earth. And Lord, we just give you praise and honor and glory. Lord, help us to receive from you, but help us to give. Amen. Our attention, our love, our hearts to you this morning, Lord. Oh, Make a difference in every life that's here. We pray by your precious, wonderful spirit today, Lord. Help us to flow with you. Lead us, guide us. Show us exactly what you want to do in this service. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 Go ahead, start us off here. Well, <clears throat> Ken and I were asking each other for several days, well, what are we going to talk about? What do you want to preach about? We knew we were going to tag team, which I told some people. That means we're going to interrupt each other a lot. I don't know. We don't mean to be rude. We just you know, accidentally How just rude. ourselves. Yeah, well, I tell you what. I, I, I woke up tonight a few times this past week, and I tell you what was before my eyes every time was wise men came from the east asking, where is he? He's been born king of the Jews. And they were seeking something. They knew something, but they didn't know all of it. And I think that's how all of us are, right? Amen. We want the Lord. A lot of us have already met the Lord. We haven't, but, but there's more. You know, they knew something about the Lord. They said, we've seen his star. But anyway, we were going to read from the book of Matthew, chapter 2. Starting in verse 2. Right. Should I do this part first or later? Yeah. No, I'm do well, you know, I mean, how many of y'all heard different things about what the wise men were? You heard the word magi? And that sounds like a weird, you know, like almost the word magic. Um, it's, and then another place calls them kings, right? Kings came from the east. And then you think, well, didn't, if there's several of them, didn't they have other stuff they had to stay home and do for the long, long time it took to make a trip back then? Well, this says the term magi is the precise Greek word used in Matthew's gospel, M-A-G-I. His story demonstrates that these were astrologers, or astronomers, people who watched the heavens, and <clears throat> interpreters of omens or dreams. You think, well, I thought astrology people didn't always worship Jesus, you know? They were following the star, and they were dreaming dreams or interpreting dreams. And when they arrived in Jerusalem, this article says, their curt bluntness had King Herod spitting out his morning coffee. Where is he who's been born the king of the Jews? We've seen his star and we're coming to worship him. That's not what the guy who was supposed to be the king of God's people wanted to do. Well, maybe these people were direct and to the point. Anyway, if you can remember back farther in the Bible, how many of y'all remember about the book of Daniel where and they kidnapped a lot of people from Jerusalem, and they kept the finest, the smartest, the wisest kids, and the king just took them and made them part of his court. Young as they were, they were probably teenagers. And he learned that they were able to interpret dreams and know things. And, see. and it said he would make them a ruler over a bunch of people, or he'd reward them with a lot of wealth if they would be part of the king. So that's not how, in a democratic nation like ours, that's not how you usually see people up. Uh, Making it to the top. Oh, you can interpret dreams. Okay, you'd be on the president's cabinet. Um, hey, that's just not what we're, we're not used to that method. But back then, a lot of people thought that spiritual wisdom 
had a different value. So the king would make them rich. That's in the book of Daniel. When Nebuchadnezzar, remember Pharaoh? Moses came in there. There were people that had what they called magic arts. They were able to interpret things, to see things. Joseph got out of jail and became ruler over almost the whole nation in one day. And they said, we've got to find someone who can interpret the king's dream. No one can do it. The usual wise men. <laughs> so they, had, they were in the habit of taking people and adding them to their court because they showed certain kinds of knowledge. Thank you, Daniel. You're wonderful. I think I'll be okay, surprisingly. I'm usually the one that has to sit down. But anyway, that's just all background. It says, wise men or kings. Imagine. Are you wearing it? Oh, no, you can do it. fine. I'll interrupt you in a minute. Good. Yeah, you're making me nervous if you're not interrupting me at all. <laughs> but it starts out saying after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem. And we wanted to point out some of the things where it just says what they did. Let's read the whole passage. Would you like read to read the whole passage? In there? No, no. All right, I'm going to read it. Now, after Jesus was born in Bethlehem of Judea, in the days of Herod the king, behold, wise men from the east came to Jerusalem, saying, Where is he who has been born king of the Jews? For we have seen his star in the east, or his star as it rose, and we've come to worship him. Now, when Herod the king heard this, he was troubled, and all Jerusalem was troubled with him. And when he gathered all the chief priests and the scribes of the people, that's the, the Jewish leaders that um, knew the Bible, knew the Old Testament, he gathered them all together and asked of them where the Christ was supposed to be born. He's going asking them for their Old Testament learning and knowledge. So they said to him, In Bethlehem of Judea, for it's written thus by the prophet, But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, <coughs> you are not the least among the rulers of Judah, for out of you shall come a ruler who will shepherd my people Israel. So they said, Bethlehem. Then Herod, when he had secretly called those wise men, determined from them what time the star had appeared. And he sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for that young child. And when you have found him, bring back word to me that I may come and worship him also. Well, first, they, they didn't know right away. That sounded reasonable. They would come to worship there was this guy wanting to worship. When they heard the king, they departed, and behold, the star which they'd seen in the east went before them till it came and it stood over where the young child was. When they saw the star, they rejoiced with exceedingly great joy. And when they had come into the house, they saw the young child with Mary his mother, and they fell down and they worshipped him. When they had opened their treasures, they presented gifts to him, gold, frankincense, and myrrh, and then, being divinely warned in a dream that they should not return to Herod, they departed for their own country in another way. I'm looking at me. Just keep going. Oh, I, I was just wondering to ask him, well, what stands out to all of you about that? I underlined a lot of the, you know, when you're in school, verbs, came, saw, rejoiced. Um, they did certain things. Yeah, we can do. They took action. Yeah. Well, yeah. Mm -hmm. Which ones stand out to you? You know, this this story tells me something. And we, as believers, uh, we can be, we can do one of two things. We can sit or we can see. And you can oh. just sit on your blessed assurance and yeah. not get anywhere with God. Yeah. And if you just sit on your blessed assurance, that's what's going to happen. You're not going to get anywhere with God. You have got to be like these three wise men. You've got to be seekers. Seekers means commitment. Seekers. I mean, can you imagine how committed they were to have taken a couple of years of their life to go across the nation and then come back? We've got to be just that committed. I mean, if God called you to do something, if God asked you to do something and it took two years of your life, would you do it? I'm telling you, we've got to get committed. Not none of this mammy pammy stuff. We gotta get after it. Yeah, right. And serve God with all of our heart, all of our soul, all of our mind, and all of our strength. And so, you know, I believe 
that most Christians are sitting and not seeking. But I want to be one who will seek. Amen. Seek. Where am I supposed to do, go? What am I supposed to do? What are my steps of action that I'm supposed to take to get me to where the King wants me to be so that I can worship Him and so that I can obey Him and so I can live that life, hallelujah, that God has called me to live. Bless the Lord. Yes. Ah, oh, that's inspiring. Yeah. It's an adventure if you're seeking God. Yeah. If you're just trying to survive, and I've sometimes I've just been, oh, I'll tell you one of sometimes. You're telling me all this stuff, and right this minute, I'm just trying to survive. My, my brain would be overwhelmed, or I had too much to do, I thought. I thought. But yeah, if you're really living seeking God, there is an, an element of adventure in that. Because if you're seeking, that means you don't know it all yet. Mm -hmm. You don't know it all. These people, like I said, we don't know their exact story. But at about 13 countries in the Middle East, all claimed, <coughs> excuse me, that the wise men was theirs. You know, the wise men came from us. From Persia, all different places over there. They could have been where they came from. But all of them had this custom where if you found someone who was really smart, really learned, that, like I said, the king would attach them or kind of take them in, and then he'd make, their, he'd make it worth them. They weren't his slaves. He'd pay them real high wages. And in the book of Daniel, he said he'll make you, make this one and that one a ruler over a whole bunch. He gave them a lot of control, a lot of money. And uh, but these kings or wise men or rulers or rich guys who knew a lot, they had a lot. Sometimes that makes us a little bit cocky. Well, I have a position. I'm not going on some trip to seek some newborn baby. Well, I have a lot of money. I've already figured out they what I want to do. About they did. That takes a lot. They humbled yes. themselves and made it. It wasn't about them. And you notice later when it said they opened their treasures. And it, it, it was, I mean, they were able to give expensive gifts. That wasn't, I mean, it would be maybe it was still sacrifice for them. I don't know. But they bowed down. Yes. Before, it says when they, it didn't say the newborn. At this point, it says they came and saw a young child. Not in a manger, but in the house. His right. mother Mary, if you're looking at verse. Were they back verse. from Egypt then? I don't know. It could have been part of Egypt that they were from. Oh, I see. No, this is before they went. Because okay. if you start reading after the yeah, passage, right. it says, an angel warned Joseph right after this. Get out of town, get out of the country. But yeah, Jesus might have been more of a toddler, or maybe just a bigger baby. That's but it said they. That's his direction. Because these, these three had a mission. They, they were following their own until they met Jesus. And once they met Jesus, they were sending the whole thing in the direction. Yes. 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 <coughs> they made it about him, didn't they? They opened their yes. treasures. I'm going to give you some of these yeah. verbs. Okay. They came. Okay. So if you're taking notes, number one. They came to Jerusalem. So they were seeking. Uh, they said, who's this that's uh, born, uh, where is he who's born king of the Jews? So they were asking. See, they were asking questions. We need that question. And um, later we see that uh, they saw. They saw the star. Sometimes we don't see it. We don't see what God's doing. Amen. He's shining a light on something, but we don't see it. But they were able to see the star. There was a revelation that came to them. And we need to ask. See, they asked before they saw. They asked, and then they saw. You know, they, they saw it, and then they found. They knocked, and the door was open. So, there's a, see the action? They were taking action. And I just want to encourage you to take action. And then it says they ask, and then it says they rejoice. And uh, we need to be people of, of rejoicing. People of rejoicing. Amen. They weren't pessimistic. They were thrilled. They rejoiced. Because of what they saw. When God reveals something to us and shows us something, let's get excited. Just like I was saying a minute ago, I'm excited about Sunday nights next year. 
That's right. Yeah. You know, I'm excited about some changes that we're going to have at this church next year. We're going to have ushers for every section, and we're going to calm down some of the excess noise and so forth. But because see, Nancy and I were praying about some of this because you know some of this riffraff that's been going on in here and noise and all this, it's got to stop so that we can get the the message to people. And we won't scare off half the people who come in here. <laughs> oh, we have so much racket and stuff and noise and so on and so forth. It's going to stop. Yeah. Amen. Yeah. But we, we, we pray about what to do. And, you know, well, I met with Brother Greg, actually. And, and he, he's, I think he said, why don't, you, why don't you have some ushers? Or I might have said it. And uh, so, amen. So we're, hey, if the bar can have bouncers, so we yes. <laughs> have some bouncers in here. You know, okay, you know and then when we're praying over people, it's, it's yeah. somebody slamming the spirit of someone well, yeah. someone can, you can catch them and ease their fall or whatever. That's right. Hallelujah. That's right. and so we're going to be doing that this next year. <laughs> but so they rejoice. Right. And then it says they fell down and worshiped. Yeah. See, there's more action. Yeah. They rejoice, and that's getting excited and, you know, bubbly and, yes, right. you know, and, and it's yeah. just praising, being exuberant. But then they fell down and worshipped. And to me, this is amazing because these were kings. These were rulers. These were magistrates. These were wealthy, educated people. I mean, it'd be like, you know, some of the governors and People in charge of Harvard yeah. and college. Yeah, all these are coming and, and bowing I mean, I down. See, see, you and I need to bow down. Amen. Amen. Bowing down means yes. you're uh, the boss. You're smarter than me. You've got the direction. And I'm going to give you homage. Right. Hallelujah. And, the, and they had sense enough to do that, Nancy. Hallelujah. Yes, it wasn't all about them. And in their minds, you know, they would come and say, look, do you realize who's visiting you? Man, I'm smart and I'm wealthy and I have a high position. But no, oh, yeah. they didn't say anything about themselves. Except, I brought you a gift, you know, here. Ooh, you. There's another action. Yeah. Okay. They brought, them a gift. They, they brought gifts. Well, always bring a gift to the Lord. Yeah. Whenever come empty hand. I'm not just talking about money. Yeah, but if all you got is a quarter, put that quarter in. Give it to the Lord. But but give Him your heart, give Him your life, give Him your time, give Him your love, give Him your, give him your all. Bring, the, the, the greatest gift we can bring the Lord is our heart, really. Yeah. 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 And, then, and then finally they, you know, they departed. Uh, for their own country in a, uh, a different way. Uh, what, what does that mean? Well, they, they went out from there to <laughs> they went out to spread the good news. Oh, I'm sure. They went out to spread the good news. And that's what we're supposed to do too. Now, go ahead. Let's just say this word, but the word sensitive. Mm. Not like I'm yes. sensitive about my poor feelings and you have to be nice to me, but sensitive to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. 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 Because it says, and be born of God in a dream. Yeah. Well, have you ever brushed off Either a dream or a deep seated. I hate to say the word feeling because sometimes <clears throat> my feelings could go up and down like roller coaster, but that, that gut feeling that God gave you, I sometimes unfortunately brush that aside. But they didn't. And they let God speak to them in a dream that they shouldn't go back to that king. It's funny though, the first time they met him, you know, they went asking all around Jerusalem, they had at least one meeting with Herod. And they didn't immediately just know. These were human beings. They weren't God, right? They didn't immediately know that something was wrong with King Herod and his interests and his attitude. But as the story unfolded, when they needed to know, God gave them that dream. Don't go back. Don't tell that man where you found the baby. So uh, the angel was able to warn Joseph to get the child and his mother out of town. And then there was a horrible slaughter of innocent babies that came later. That Jesus wasn't there. He'd been moved away to Egypt for a while. That they were sensitive. Mm -hmm. They listened to the Spirit. They listened to what they what they knew, what they had. And then they obeyed. When God showed them they needed to not go back and tell that king anything else, 
they took a different road. I guess maybe, I mean, we always see them. Ooh, that's good. Campus. Be willing to adjust your journey. They did. They did that's a that's the sign for you this morning. You be willing to adjust your journey. You might think that you're supposed to do this and such and live in this and such a place and work in this and such whatever. You might think that, but you'd be like these, these guys who are willing to adjust their journey. Be willing to live in a different place. Be willing to move to a different job. Be willing to adjust your journey. And if you'll do that, oh, what? There's just something powerful about a willing spirit that will be adjustable. Hallelujah. You just think about those 12 disciples. How willing were they to be adjustable? They dropped everything. They had their careers and everything else for three and a half years and followed Jesus. And wasn't just for three and a half years and ended up being the rest of their lives. Hallelujah. We've got to be willing to be adjustable. That's a good word. Yeah. Yes. They changed the whole plan, didn't they? And I mean, I'm talking about changing two years of your life. I have a hard time sometimes when God wants to adjust part of my day that I thought was going to go a certain way. Oh, no way. We're supposed to be going over there at this time. You know, Jesus handled a lot of what seemed horrible interruptions. Here he's teaching the crowd. And somebody said, will you please come? Because I've just got, you know, my daughter's probably right at the, on the edge of death. Mm. And then here comes this lady and uh, touches him and gets a healing. And then there's this poor dad standing there. My daughter's about to die. They're telling me she's about to die any minute. And Jesus said, he'll come to the house. So here comes this lady. And she has to say she told him all the truth. I know how oh some goodness. of us, I won't, I won't pick on the men, but I'm a woman. I know how some of us could be when we want to tell all the story. <laughs> oh, all the men in the 11 <laughs> years. I don't know. I mean, I it took a long time for that poor man sitting there wanting him to come heal his son. Her daughter dies. Her daughter. And, uh, yeah, she's standing there, you know, and, and we'll announce that it lasted for 11 years. Now, I'm so, now in the 11th year, it began to turn worse like this. I paid all my money to the doctors. I can't pay worse. And finally, someone comes up and whispers, it's too late. Your daughter's already died. So don't bother that man anymore. That's right. And Jesus heard that, and he immediately just said something. Don't fear. Only believe. He basically said, just don't, don't let the fear come. It'll be, it's going to be all right. Mm -hmm. But that, you know, poor guy. He's being polite and Jesus was letting her go on and on, probably. Adjustable turning. Yeah. And, and there was this interruption, but then it all turned out right. We know that she was raised from the dead. <laughs> so it was an even bigger miracle as it turned out. But boy, interruptions can be irritating. They can be scary. Yeah. At a time like that, when you think you've got minutes to get somebody prayed through, and here's some, something that kind of ruins it all. Seemingly, when Jesus handled that just graciously, He just said, "Don't fear, only believe." Hallelujah! Hallelujah! You got any other good points that you want to bring out of that oh, story? I know there's a whole lot in there. Sometimes go home and read Matthew chapter two, and this is just verse one through twelve. Like I said, there's a lot more events that unfold after that. But you know, they were divinely warned in a dream. They were divinely brought there in the first place, weren't they? Ken always told me he thought that the, the gifts, the expensive gifts, we all know what gold is. Yeah. But frankincense is not something, I guess, unless you hang around at the essential oil or herb shop, you don't hear as much about myrrh and frankincense. Isn't there a little, little bit of it in our anointing oil? Oh, yeah. But it's one of the more expensive things. Oh, yeah. To get a chunk of, I believe those are both things they got off of a, some kind of, it's not like just the sap from a pine tree. But it's that nature of a thing where it was harvested real hard to get a tiny little sort of crystal of it. And it, it was it was very, very expensive to get a whole case of it, like probably they brought. <clears throat> I know a tiny bottle of one brand of frankincense oil can be $70. And that's just the oil where they've distilled it and let it go into a container and so on. <coughs> so uh, $70 for just a few drops. You can imagine this was the chunk of the raw, fresh stuff. And you were going to tell what I, I just said. Ken usually says that the reason they brought these three expensive gifts, among other things, was you know what was about to happen. We said an angel came and told this time Joseph, get everybody up and leave now. And they left in the night, it says. 
a little later in Matthew chapter 2. They had to journey and find a new place to live where they didn't know anybody in a foreign country. And here, you know how everybody, he had a trade, he was a carpenter. And they have to find other arrangements for who knows how long until later it said, the Lord spoke to Joseph and said, it's okay now because the evil king or the people who wanted to destroy the child, they're gone, they're dead. I don't know, it didn't say if it was a year, three years, five years. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So a lot of time, maybe that was a lot of the financing of them just to take care of them. That Jesus. was all the financing. I'm telling you, those gifts I don't know how long it of gold, frankincense, and myrrh set up Joseph in his carpenter shop, paid for their housing, and paid for Jesus' college. Oh yeah, I'm not kidding. When God guides you somewhere, He provides for it. Amen. Where God guides, He provides. And, and, and if we'll be obedient in the journey of seeking, if we'll be obedient in the journey of seeking and flexible in the journey, see, to, to, to take different turns and do what we're supposed to do and, and just obey the Lord like they did, they obeyed the Lord. You know the, the three wise men obeyed the Lord? Mary and Joseph obeyed the Lord. They went over to Egypt and then they came back when they were told to and what they got, God had took care of all of them. And see, God will take care of everything in your life financially and any other way if you will be flexible to let Him lead your life. Amen. This whole sermon today, or this whole little teaching that we, you know, we want to keep it real short today. This whole little teaching is about one thing. It's about seeking God and finding Him and, and being willing and flexible. And if we do look at the rewards, God's going to be, he's going to take care of every need that comes around. How we, we're going to be taken care of spiritually. We're going to be saved. We're going to be born again. He's, he's going to give us the, the peace that we need in our minds. He's the Prince of Peace. You know, he's going to take care of the finances in our life. He's going to take care of the healing and the health in our life. He's just going to take care of everything. When we will seek the Lord, there's a, there's a saying that they say, and uh, you know, wise men still seek Him today. Right. And if you and I are wise today, we'll continue mm. to Amen. seek the Lord. Amen. Amen. I like that. Amen. Amen. You know, they talked about too the story about uh, before this, when Jesus was about to be born, that they were all looking and there was no room for them at the end. How about making room? I have to do that. I'm serious. On a daily basis, I um, if you were hogging the middle of a bench, and you don't have to sit in the very center of it. <clears throat> Sometimes I just have to fill in my mind. It's like, okay, Lord, I, I'll scoot over. He doesn't want me to go away. I can't disappear. But I make room. Lord, okay, I'll scoot. You know, my thoughts and my vision. Oh, God, make this certain kind of food. Or we have to do this. Or we have to do that. But I'll, I'll, I'll scoot mine over a little bit because you want the Lord to be in there with you and mm -hmm. listen to Him. Amen. So they, these people all made room for the plan of God, didn't they? They didn't try to control everything. And I'm guilty a lot of times of thinking, oh, well, wait, I've got to take control of this and this. I wouldn't put it in those words. I don't admit it. That's what we do. I think we know how it needs to be. And God knows how to have a perfect whatever it is you need to have. What they valued and found precious once they met the Lord, their values change. Yes, their values change, and ours do too. Hallelujah. Make room and be sensitive. Our to values do need to change, don't they? Yeah. Yeah. We need to put the spiritual things first. Yeah. And if we seek Him, you know, there's an interesting verse in the Bible. You know, most of you know it, and it's in Matthew 6 33. And it says, uh, Seek you first. Yeah. Yeah. The kingdom of God. Yeah. And His righteousness. And all these other things. Will be added unto you. Seek God and the things else that we worry them. about in the natural are taken care of when we get the spiritual life. Yeah. Yes. Get your spiritual life in order. Let's all seek the Lord. We're gonna we're gonna close with um, a song. The more I seek you, the more I find you. The more I seek you, the more I find you. And because we close so early. An hour, right now, an hour and five minutes earlier than we normally do. I want us to take a minute and have a little art altar time. Anybody who needs it. If you're not born again today, if you don't know Jesus, 
If you haven't ventured out on that journey to seek you, I want to invite you up to this altar and come find me and tug on my coat. And I'll pray with you. Or tug on Pastor Nancy. We'll pray with you to be born again, to be saved. If you just want to come and be like the three wise men and bow down, come, come around the altar and come up in front and let's just bow down for just for about five more minutes. And let's just worship Him. But the most important thing is that there's a willingness in you to seek Him. A willingness in you to adjust your journey. A willingness in you to follow Him and make Him Lord. The more I seek you. The more I find you.
Drink from the cup in your hand 